Lord speaks to David through the prophet Nathan in the first reading. I anointed you king of Israel, rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you his house and his wives. Yet you cut down Uriah the Hittite and took his wife as your own. In spite of all of David's success and blessings, he still gets involved in an affair with Bathsheba and ends up killing her husband to cover it up. This could be the story of a contemporary politician. We're seeing stories like this <laughs> all the time on the news. Why does this kind of thing happen? You know, why is it that even success doesn't satisfy people? Why is sin so powerful in our lives that even the most accomplished people fall into it so easily? The Bible says that the main problem of sin is not guilt. The main problem of sin is shame. It's a deep sense of personal inadequacy. In the book of Genesis, if you go all the way back to the first account of sin, portrays this fact very clearly that original sin is an emotional problem, and it's a problem of personal identity. So we find that Adam and Eve start out naked and not ashamed. And when they enter the condition of sin, then they are ashamed of themselves and they're covering themselves. And when the Lord calls out to Adam, Adam responds, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. In other words, I was fearful because I was ashamed of myself. His fear comes from the shame. So we can see if we read between the lines of the scripture that the affair with Bathsheba originates in David's deep insecurity and doubts about himself. The account of how David enters the affair begins with this sentence, it says, In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab with the army, but David remained in Jerusalem. So it's a detail that suggests that all is not well with David. We don't know exactly what's wrong with him. Perhaps he feels depressed or unfulfilled, but he has lost interest in his responsibilities as king. He's staying in Jerusalem when he should be out with the troops. Now on this Father's Day, we could try to psychoanalyze David. We could remember when the Lord first sent Samuel to anoint a new king who would come from the sons of Jesse, and Jesse brought out all his sons, and Samuel said, none of these are the Lord's, are the Lord's anointed. And he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you've got? And then finally, Jesse mentions David. He said, oh, that's right, I have another son. <laughs> so we could speculate that David didn't receive a whole lot of support from his father. Maybe that left him with deep doubts about himself, which, which continued to plague him throughout his life. But no matter how we eventually get into it, the fact is that we all live in this condition of sin, which results in our emotional life in this sense of personal inadequacy and anxiety about it. So how do we get healed of this? Paul says we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So we know that no amount of rules for changing behavior, do not do this, do not do that, can heal us of our deepest shames and anxieties. We know that no amount of goals we set for ourselves, no amount of success is necessarily going to heal us of our deepest anxieties and shame. Only the love of Christ can do it. Only knowing ourselves to be loved by Christ can do it. So Paul says, I have been crucified by Christ. The old Paul who cracked the spiritual whip over everybody as a Pharisee who persecuted Christians because of his own insecurities and fears, that old Paul must die and a new Paul must be born. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The love of Christ has changed his life. And this is the love of Christ that changes even the life of a prostitute and the gospel. The English translation calls her a sinful woman, but the fact is she is a prostitute. And that makes it even more shocking to have her portrayed as touching Jesus and kissing him and massaging him. I mean, this is a woman who's hanging around with a lot of men. She's promiscuous. But by telling us this, the gospel makes an important point. 
this woman is a person created in the image of God. And so, like all of us, she's made for love. She needs to be loved. And for the first time in her life, she feels the love of Jesus, lifting her out of her old life. She is a street walker. She's been used by so many men for their pleasure, maybe even abused by them. But she comes to learn what true intimacy is. This woman, who has for years lived with the disrespect of others, finds self-respect in the presence of Jesus. And the very actions she once degraded herself to perform for money are now transformed into expressions of authentic love for Jesus. Jesus says, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven because she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Love is the evidence for her forgiveness not the basis of it. We cannot earn forgiveness by trying to live a good life. We first of all have to know that God loves us for the persons he made us to be, each one uniquely in the image of God. And then this love of Jesus transforms the sins of our life into good. On this Father's Day, we remember that no one can love us perfectly. Only God can love us perfectly. So today we give thanks for our fathers, and we also forgive them for the ways in which they maybe fail to love us the way we needed them to, because their fathers could not love them perfectly either. And we give thanks that once we accept the forgiveness of God, all the bad things that happen to us and to those we love can become blessings. Everyone, from prostitutes to kings, to the great Jewish spiritual master Paul, everyone must be healed of their shame and fear by allowing the love of Christ to embrace them. We all must allow the love of Christ to show us the way to become the persons God has made us to.